This is the Formula One World Cup 2022, featuring 10 nations, representing England, Hamilton and Norris, Spain Alonso and Sainz, for Germany, Vettel and Mick Schumacher, Netherlands has Verstappen and Vachur, France with Gassi and Ocon, Brazil, Drogovic and Fittipaldi, Canada, Stroll and Latifi, Japan, Sonoda and Sato, Australia, Ricardo and Piastri, and Denmark with Kevin Magnussen and Lungard. Every single car will be identical, so the drivers are making the difference for their country. Countries. They're going to contest over five rounds, which are only five laps each, and we'll use the normal F1 point system, but of course the only tally we care about are the respective teams. So without further ado, let's get into round one at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, the closest we can get to Qatar, where the real football World Cup is being held right now. The roar of the crowd can only mean one thing really, race day has arrived here in Abu Dhabi and it's time to join our teams who are getting ready down on the grid. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Fernando Alonso, Esteban Ocon and Norris. Gasly, Sonoda, Mick Schumacher and Sebastian Vettel. Stroll, Ricardo, Kevin Magnussen and Drogovic. Richard Vashore, Fittipaldi, Marino Sato and Oscar Piastri. Lundgaard and Nicholas Latifi. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. The F122 World Cup is a go. I am driving as Lando Norris representing England. Here we go to five red lights. Round number one at Abu Dhabi. Lights out and away we go. We qualified P6. It's a slow getaway from us in these equal cars. Sonoda and Gasly are able to jump us. Hamilton and Alonso battling into turn one. Verstappen keeping the lead. But remember, this is the World Cup. We only care about the team points. So if I can just get a few more positions, then we can really help out Lewis and England here. But first and foremost, we're going to have to try and get past Gasly and a very quick starting Sonoda for Japan. I reckon the Spain team here is going to be very, very strong though with Alonso and Sainz already pressurizing Hamilton up ahead. Alonso pulling out for the move on the outside. Sainz may try and follow him through. Lewis goes defensive as well as Gasly on me, but he actually ends up attacking Sonoda, his IRL former teammate from Alpha Tauri this season. But can we get the both of them maybe using a lot of ERS early on, but because we've only got five laps, maybe management won't be an issue and we're going to power past the Frenchman and the Japanese driver to get up into P6. But meanwhile, up ahead, Alonso has overtaken Hamilton. We've got Ocon and Sainz going side by side. They're still going at it. Sainz on the inside, Ocon on the outside, under the bridge of the hotel. Ocon down to P5, Sainz up to P4. What did I say? I think the Spain team is going to be very, very strong. And that team aspect is maybe the only thing that's going to be a dampener on that man who's just set the fast up of the Grand Prix. Max Verstappen, his teammate, is the F2 driver for sure from the F122 game. He's going to be a bit lower down because all the F2 drivers are rated generally lower in the game as we make quick work of Ocon on the inside. And he's now actually pressurized by Sonoma. Noda and Gassi for company, even the two German drivers, Sebastian Vettel and Mick Schumacher in there, you know, with equal cars, everything's so, so tight here, and it's almost like watching an F2 race. And here, Sebastian Vettel looks like he's very likely to maybe try and pull off a pass on Gassi. He pulls out early to the left-hand side. DRS not activated yet in the race, so just with pure slipstream and a drag race down to the left-hander, dives down the inside, not, not only Gasly, but also maybe has a look at Sonoda for the German up into P8. His F1 career may be over now officially in Formula 1, but here he's still got a World Cup to contest. But let's look at a replay of that lap one because we kind of missed it with our own battle with Gasly. This fight between Fernando Alonso and Lewis Hamilton. Spain versus England. As Verstappen pulls away, the two of them still neck and neck now through this second straight off that chicane. Alonso still trying to get this P2. In the background, you can also see Ocon and Sainz going wheel to wheel. And Alonso goes all the 
way round the outside of Hamilton to get the P2. And then we follow on that brilliant battle with Sainz and Ocon. And that's where we followed through there. So some fantastic battling going on. But the man in control right now is Max Verstappen. He's won three Abu Dhabi Grand Prix in a row. So maybe not a surprise. He's so good at this circuit, even at equal machinery compared to the likes of Alonso and Hamilton. But Hamilton may try and come back at Fernando. I'm going to try and attack his teammate, Carlos Sainz. So this really is the two English drivers versus the two Spanish drivers. This well could be the battle for the World Cup title between us two teams because I'm sure for sure is not going to be scoring very many points for Netherlands compared to Max Verstappen. So that just may take his country out of contention. It really is a team game here. We've got past Sainz here, but Hamilton is still trying to get past Fernando Alonso. It's Sebastian Vettel sails through on the inside as Sonoda makes a small mistake with a lockup and uh, Vettel's through into P7. Schumacher P10, so a couple of points there for Team Germany. Sonoda flying the flag proudly for Japan in P8 ahead of Gasly in P9, who seems to be rather stuck behind his old Alpha Tauri teammate. But moving into the final lap of round one of the F1 22 World Cup, Hamilton looking to make a pass on Alonso to retake P2. Alonso squeezes him. The two are going to bang tyres through the right-hander. Alonso still has the advantage, but Hamilton has DRS crucially, and he's going to power past him to potentially get the P2. He does, but will Alonso come back at him? Yes, he will. Oh, this is marvellous stuff from Fernando Alonso, two-time world champion, gets past the seven-time champ, back up into P2. That was quite surprising. I thought Hamilton would have had that with DRS, but Fernando really pulling out all the stops to get a crucial P2 and 18 points for Spain. But it's going to be Max Verstappen who takes the first victory here at the World Cup. 25 points in the bag for Netherlands, but zero for Vichur. Alonso P2 for Spain, Hamilton third for England, myself in P4. Solid, solid points for our team. Sainz, Ocon, Vettel, Sonoda and Gasly Schumacher round out the top 10. It'll be Max Verstappen taking full plaudits for getting the outright maximum points available. 25 on the board. So where the true tally matters, the team standing, Spain take an early small lead ahead of England by one point. Netherlands up there, 26 all from Verstappen. France, Germany, Japan get off the mark. Australia, Brazil, Denmark and Canada yet to score but it's only early days. Round one, we've got four more rounds to go. Let's go to round number two. Welcome to Silverstone, home of the British Grand Prix. This iconic track held the very first World Championship race back in 1950, and it's a firm favourite amongst fans and drivers alike. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and a very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Vettel, Gasly, Max Verstappen and Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, Ocon, Ricardo and Lance Stroll, Mick Schumacher, Magnussen, Enzo Fittipaldi and Norris, Latifi, Drogovic, Oscar Piastri and Marino Sato, Richard Vashaw and Christian Lungar. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. Of course, it just had to be a wet one when we came to Silverstone. Here we go, round two of the World Cup is a go. Fire lights are out and we're underway. It was a pretty poor qualifying for myself down in P14 in wet conditions on the Saturday, but looking to make up time. Hamilton on pole, though, hoping he can do some business for our team. But you've got a very, very tricky first sector. Latifi going to the back of Fittipaldi, I think what that was. Canada versus Brazil. I think Schumacher may have also gone to the back of Yuki Tsunoda as we make up a couple of positions. Meanwhile, Sebastian Vettel flying the flag for Germany. Now up into P2 as he tries to finish off this overtake. 
on Carlos Sainz. Vettel did so well to get on the second row on this Saturday, but Sainz trying to get back the position where he started on the inside of Lefield. Can Vettel go right round the outside of him? We're going to have to see. It's going to be very close, but Vettel actually outtractions him and actually gets the exit he needs. It's now wheel to wheel again as they go now towards Cops, allowing Hamilton to get a 1.9 a second lead ahead. Sainz does get ahead of Vettel. Meanwhile, Verstappen, who did struggle a little bit on Saturday, makes another mistake here in the race, it seems, because that was a little twitch of oversteer. And again, in the middle of Magnus Beckett, Ocon trying to go around the outside and bit of contact. Verstappen's actually really struggling, surprisingly, in these intermediate conditions around Silverstone as we try and power pass Sonoda and then getting a tow off Ricardo down the inside and we're going to make quick work of him on the exit getting the elbow out bit of a opposite lock needed to control the car but a very solid start for us from P14 up to A. But yeah some very surprising qualifying results here at Silverstone in the intermediate conditions compared to what we had at Abu Dhabi showing that on the F122 game at least it seems the AI do actually have maybe some strengths and weaknesses at different circuits maybe because uh, uh, remember they are they are completely equal cars as we now watch a replay from lap one at Lufield. Schumacher causing a bit of chaos behind him without the front wing. Brazil, Canada and Denmark going at it with also Sato in there for Japan. And Vishore down in P19 really not pulling his weight for the Netherlands team. And Verstappen down in P6 might be a tough day for the Dutch team as we try and go round the outside of Alonso. Easy does it on throttle, but then try and plant the power as early as we can. The rear end squirming away for Alonso. It's very nip and tuck stuff as we have to deploy a lot of ERS to get ahead. Squeeze him a bit now to the inside before taking the racing line. Alonso keeps his foot in, but ultimately we are able to get the jump up into P7, but uh, you know, in Inter's conditions, you can afford to use that much battery because it does um, generate a lot more under braking because you're going so much slower. And uh, Verstappen continues to, I don't know whether he's got damage or what, maybe from turn one antics, surely he must do because obviously we know how good he is IRL in wet conditions, but today with equal machinery here, struggling down to P7 as we climb and climb to try and support Hamilton and Team England as we're going to try and squeeze past Ocon again. A lot of ERS used, but we know we're going to kind of you know, replenish that quite a lot in the break zones. It's going to take to the exit of that corner down the hill into the last two turns to finish off this move on Ocon, who does give us a fair old good fight there and eventually get up into. P5 in a French sandwich. Hamilton posting another fast lap of the Grand Prix. It maybe seems like the win is guaranteed for him as we now move on to the last lap. Not too much action for the rest of this race until now. The last couple of corners on the last lap. Ocon makes a mistake and Verstappen gets off into P6. We just about closed up to Gasly now but as much as I tried to maybe spook him into that corner, nothing was going to happen and we're going to finish up in P5 but Hamilton takes the victory for England ahead of Carlos Sainz and Sebastian Vettel on the podium for Germany. But again, strong showing from England and Spain as I think really these two teams will be the ones contesting P1 in this World Cup. But, you know, great to see, you know, the likes of Sebastian Vettel showing his skills, showing how much class he has getting up on the podium there. But a surprising day with Verstappen down the order. And uh, for us, well, because we're so far back, I think that's why we couldn't get any higher in wet conditions. Tricky to make as many places up, maybe. But the standings now after round two, really because of Hamilton's win, 63 points now on the board for England as they take the top spot ahead of Spain with 50. Netherlands just about hold on to P3, but France really make a step up along with Germany, 28 to 22 points there. Australia get on the board with Daniel Ricciardo getting two points a day. He'll be happy. His country will be happy as we get on to round number three. We're here in the coastal shores of Florida for the Miami Grand Prix, which has become the 11th Formula One track held in the United States. The grandstands are packed for what we hope is going to be another fantastic race. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position. And Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Gasly, Fernando Alonso and Fettel, Magnussen, Sonoda, Mick Schumacher, 
and Daniel Ricciardo. Ocon, Norris, Richard Vashaw and Stroll. Drogovic, Lundgaard, Enzo Fittipaldi and Oscar Piastri. Sato and Nicholas Latifi. With preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. A bit of a disappointing effort on Saturday for myself. Miami, not one of my favorite circuits, but can we make up places in the race as we go to five red lights for round three of the World Cup? And it's Verstappen versus Hamilton at turn one. Verstappen dives down the inside. Lewis tries to switch back, but I think the Dutchman has it. Into P1 he goes as we try and make a move around the outside of Ocon. Gonna have to use plenty of ERS though to finish off the move because Ocon is still very much there on the right hand side into the left. And Ocon still going side by side with us so at such high speed, but we eventually have the better racing line to get up into P11, and then we'll be patient on the throttle to just dummy Ricardo into a tighter line and get up into P10. And one point so far for the World Cup Championship. Meanwhile, very close affair behind between the Canadians and the Brazilians of uh, Stroll, Latifi, Fittipaldi and Drogo. It's a bit of a shame the F2 drivers are so lower rated in the game. Doesn't really allow maybe a true look at how well these nations would do as their respective teams if there was actually a Formula 1 World Cup. But just have to deal with what we've got with the base F122 game as we send one down the inside of Sonoda to get up into P9 and then get it cracking hopefully on Mick Schumacher but up, up ahead it's quite close this time thankfully for the top runners P1 isn't running away the staff in only half a second just about ahead of Hamilton Gasly flying high for France in P3 Sainz Vettel Magnussen P6 doing very well for Team Denmark in P6 there so he's had a blinder around here so I guess his AI just loves this circuit I guess over one lap Alonso P7 Schumacher is the one ahead of us in P8 but we're hopefully going to try and swap those positions Positions round on lap two. Big send on the inside. Bit of contact. Getting the elbow out on Shumi as he tries to stick it to the inside. We give him the room to work with, but ultimately have the better momentum into that tight left and right. Up into P8 and now looking to make the pass on Fernando Alonso. This is quite crucial because you've got Hamilton up there in P2 uh, and then signs a few places back. So if we can get Alonso, we can try and comfortably outscore Team Spain today in the third round, which is, you know, the halfway point of this World Cup as we go down the inside, get very close to Magnussen's rear, rear end, but uh, we get the move into my lucky number P7. Hamilton, meanwhile, in P2, very much still creeping around to try and take the race victory, maybe with DRS. And speaking of DRS, Sainz, though, is going to get a pass maybe done on Gasly. The two side by side. This could be crucial for Spain in this tournament. Can Gasly hold on for France and crucially maybe help us out, ironically, in all of this by keeping Sainz behind? He does, but Sainz continues to have DRS and he sends one to the inside. It's a bit of a kamikaze dive, but it works out for the Spaniard maybe because he's going to be on the inside line now for the right-hander. Surely has the better momentum. He does. And he's up into P3 onto a podium spot. Lap four. Oh, Verstappen locks up. Oh, they make contact. Hamilton and Verstappen come to blows again. But Verstappen down to P2 with a lock up there. Lewis up into P1 just through that mistake alone. But Verstappen surely is going to come back at him. He was leading for the entire race up until lap four there. So he's going to have the pace to maybe come back at Lewis and the pressure will be strong. Meanwhile, the end of that lap, Sainz and Gasly still going at it. Gasly trying his best to get up onto that last podium spot, but Sainz is going to hold on strong, but that's going to invite pressure from Vettel for Germany in P5 behind. Last lap then here of round three of this World Cup. Can Verstappen take another victory for Netherlands, or will it be Hamilton's second win, and a uh, second win in a row this will be, into that same corner? He locks up, but crucially, he's able to still rotate the car somehow. Verstappen maybe had a bit of an open goal there to maybe get up into P1. But Hamilton somehow controlled that lockup and just didn't go deep enough in the same way Verstappen did to maintain P1 behind. We've actually been held up by Kevin Magnussen. I closed up to him, but I just wasn't able to pass him. He actually had some insane speed. He showed it on Saturday by qualifying that high anyway. And in equal cars, I just could 
do I could do nothing. We know the AI on this game are very strong at Miami, especially in Sector 3 on the straight line speed. And this is the proof because Alonso actually almost tries to re-overtake me as we're really struggling for battery. I drain too much of it trying to keep up with Magnussen. And we're down to a single percentile. So we're going to have to settle for P7 and the fastest lap. But that will gain us one extra point, of course. But like I said, the World Cup is a team game. And Hamilton, our teammate, gets the P1. So I'll admit it, at this point, Hamilton is very much carrying this team. I, I'm trying my best, but the qualifying's haven't been that great, actually, in equal cars versus these AI. But uh, Hamilton does the business for Team England ahead of Verstappen and uh, Sainz did hold on to that P3 as much as Gasly tried. So, so a pretty good day in the office for my team. But also, uh, I must really uh, commend Magnussen doing a sterling effort, getting Denmark on the board with eight points. But England leads Spain 95-69. to Verstappen, all on his own, still in third place with 52 points, ahead of France and Germany with 40-34 to respectively. Japan, Australia, 6-2. and two. Brazil and Canada yet to get off the Mark, but there's still opportunities with two more rounds to go. Let's go to round four. Welcome to Monza, where the crowd are ready for today's action, and we hope you're ready to see the world's best drivers fighting it out for that number one spot. It's time for the Italian Grand Prix. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And P2 goes to Daniel Ricciardo, a strong showing from the Australian. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Stroll, Norris, Carlos Sainz and Fernando Alonso, Mick Schumacher, Hamilton, Sato and Pierre Gasly, Vettel, Magnussen, Esteban Ocon and Sonoda. Fittipaldi, Lundgaard, Felipe Drogovic and Richard Vashore, Oscar Piastri and Nicholas Latifi. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. A much better qualifying for myself, but a very topsy-turvy one, which featured Ricardo and Stroll for Australia and Canada in the top three. As we go to five red lights, round number four of the World Cup is a go, and Stroll is slipstreaming Max Verstappen maybe into turn one. He's already jumped Danny Ricardo off the line as we get sandwiched in by Sainz and Schumacher and Alonso as well. So the two Team Spain drivers very close together with myself, Hamilton, down the order again I don't know what went on on the Saturday but uh, Hamilton uh, a bit slow around Monza potentially Schumacher looking pretty quick as he sends one down the inside of Sainz I tried to overtake him and he decided to overtake two cars and get up into P4 so a very interesting fourth round here Verstappen from Stroll for Canada and Ricardo for Australia in P3 this could be a massive race for these two nations in this tournament but Verstappen the lone driver from Netherlands out in front so this could be a massive opportunity for Spain to outscore England here today with Hamilton down out the points in P11 behind the two Japanese drivers of Sato and Sonoda so, so really this penultimate round this World Cup's chucked up a very interesting race here with a few different nations able to score a few more points than they were previously as we try and chase after Sainz but a bit too desperate on the inside and you saw the twitch as soon as my right tyre touched that kerb I was a little bit too eager to close up to Sainz instead he's looking to make a move on Schumacher and Alonso has powered past me and Gasly's in in there, in there as well as we go down the inside it's maybe going to be three wide nearly no Alonso gets ahead and then brake checks us into turn one to slow us up and keep us behind and side by side with Gasly through the first two turns we're down to P7 advantage Team Spain lap two, Verstappen has actually been caught up by strong Ricardo. the top three have pulled away, what is going on here Ricardo maybe showing his prowess around Monster one here in 2021 for the McLaren team. Now trying to get a podium and even higher to second place for Team Australia. Ricardo unable to go around the outside of Stroll. Stroll holds uh, holds the fence, but he's getting slipstream off Verstappen and 
Stroll will go for a move for the lead of the race. Ricardo on the left. It's three abreast. It's Netherlands versus Australia versus Canada. This is thrilling stuff. Verstappen keeps ahead though. Ricardo still unable to even get the P2, even though he was going for P1 there into turn one. And this is bunching us all up as we close back up to Fernando Alonso. But I can see that fight up the road. That's the top three. As we close in, we get Alonso back into P6. And now maybe Sainz and Schumacher could be involved in this fight. This has become a, a top five, top six, seven fight, really. And so you're seeing, you know, when, when the top guys are battling with equal cars, everyone just bunches up amazingly as Hamilton in P10 now. He's got Sonoda at some point, but is unable to get the, the more inexperienced driver of Sato on the inside of the Parabolica. This has been a very surprising uh, uh, race for Hamilton in terms of performance, kind of like what Verstappen had at Silverstone as we go very harsh on the defence on Alonso to the point where Alonso almost maybe lost the back end, uh, switching from the right to the left-hand side of the circuit. So being very harsh with our defence, trying to get as many points as we can for our team because, of course, now we can't bank on Hamilton getting a whole load of points. I'm the, uh, the, the, the lead point scorer here for the team today. And meanwhile, on lap five, some fighting going on behind between Brazil and France. Fittipaldi round the outside of Ocon. Can he get ahead? No, no points on offer. But just for pure pride here for the nations they're driving for as Sato has been overtaken by Hamilton and he is up into P9. So two points there. Uh, decent enough recovery, I guess. I mean, I can't talk too much. He did score most of our points. So I guess I can forgive him for, for one race out of form here. As we now look to try and keep up with Mick Schumacher and maybe spring one last surprise overtake in this race. But it's not going to be easy. Plenty of slipstreaming going on with Sainz in the toe of Stroll and Ricardo. Verstappen's finally pulled away 1.3. So he looks like he's going to be winning this Grand Prix. But Stroll going for a move. Maybe Ricardo. It slows up Sainz and Schumacher. Can we get the jump on one or two cars? No. We go wide because the racing line took me to the right-hand side. Schumacher was going so slow on the left. And that's actually, ironically, slowed me up enough for Alonso to go through. So I was going for a move. And instead of lost pace, and Alonso, the wild fox, has got down the inside. So Team Spain will be outscoring Team England today. Verstappen takes another victory here. The maximum points at this World Cup round, round four, around Monza. But what a day for Australia and Canada with Ricardo and Stroll on the podium. Absolutely insane. Equal cars, so you can't you can't knock them. They've literally just pulled out the bag themselves in the same machinery as everyone else. Insane. Insane stuff there from the man from Australia and Canada. But Verstappen gets the maximum points. Kind of almost a good thing for us because the, the, the worry was maybe one of the Spanish drivers would take the victory and get a whole lot of points over us. So again, as a team game, we still managed to stay ahead. But Spain do close the gap. Now 103 to 89 points. Verstappen alone is holding up Netherlands in P3 still. Ahead of Germany and France now with Schumacher getting that high position. France and Germany level on points. Australia and Canada now 20 to 15 points. Great stuff for them today. Denmark, Japan and Brazil the only nation still yet to get off the mark and we've only got one round left and as we started in the Middle East and the real Football World Cup is being held in the Middle East. We're going back to that region of the world as we go to round five at Jeddah. Welcome from the Jeddah Street Circuit for what we hope is going to be a gripping spectacle of racing. It's time to get underway as we join the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Fernando Alonso lines up on pole position. Edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Sainz, Richard Vashore, and Magnussen, Gasly, Lundgaard, Oscar Piastri, and Lando Norris, Latifi, Sato, Esteban Ocon, and Ricardo, Stroll, Mick Schumacher, Enzo Fittipaldi, and Yuki Tsunoda. Drogovic and Sebastian Vettel starts from the back of the grid. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. 
Here we are then for the final round of the F122 World Cup. It's looking like Team England versus Spain for the victories. We go to five red lights for the final race in this tournament. Lights out and away we go. It's a grace off of Piastri getting up two positions. Hamilton and Alonso side by side into turn one and Hamilton gets the lead away from Alonso. He did so well to get pole position for Spain yesterday. But Hamilton gets a great start into P1 as we go down the inside of Oscar Piastri. And a sight we haven't seen so far is two Dutch drivers up in a top five position. Verstappen in P4 ahead of Vashore. What has happened in this final race? Vashore's finally woken up in this tournament and is trying to do some work with his fellow compatriot as we go round the outside of Christian Lunga. The two Denmark drivers doing very well on Saturday. Magnussen here looking to overtake not one but two Dutch drivers as Magnussen gets up maybe into P4. Yes, he does. And we're going to try and follow him through. We overtook Vashore, followed him through on that pass and we'll follow him through and get a toe off him to get up into P5. So working in unison with the Denmark team to get those positions, get ahead of the two Dutch drivers. And the two of them are side by side. Vashore is actually attacking Verstappen. Where was this the entire tournament? If Vashore was driving like this uh, for, for all the other rounds, Netherlands would very much be in this World Cup fight. But as it stands, it is England versus Spain. But Magnussen's getting involved. And well, both drivers from Denmark getting Involved. Magnussen up into P3 now. Alonso from pole position pushed down to P4. This is actually Carlos Sainz with a better pace, it would seem, around this circuit. Up into P2, the one chasing Hamilton down. It's going to be nearly three wide. Magnussen moving on the braking. We go a bit too deep, trying to give some room. And Alton not want to get tangled up in any sort of crash with only five laps. Can't afford any sort of damage here in this race. So the two Dutch drivers are still going at it. And Richard Vashore is trying to assert some uh, last race dominance on Verstappen uh, and gets ahead in P6. What is going on here? Then you've got uh, Gasly behind Lungard P9 and Latifi in, uh, in P10 for that last point for Canada as we continue to try and pressurise Alonso to finish off this move to get into P5. So we've done one job on one Spaniard right here in this race. But now let's try and work with Magnussen maybe to close up a bit to Sainz and hope that Sainz is closing up to Hamilton uh, after lap two. I mean, he had the pace to, to go from what was, you know, the second row to overtake his teammate who was on pole to get into P2. So, and it looks like he's actually closed up on Hamilton on the minimap as we overtake Magnussen into P3. It's an English 1-3, Sainz P2, Alonso P5. As it stands, I think we'd be doing enough, but Sainz is setting the fast up of the Grand Prix. He is catching Hamilton at a rate of knots. Meanwhile, fighting going on between Piastri and Ricardo, the two Australians, and also Japan and Germany with Schumacher and Sonoda side by side. But here we are, lap three. Sainz has been electric and he's caught up to Hamilton. DRS enabled now on this lap and he's closed up even quicker. And we know on the game from previous career mode videos how insane the slipstream is around this and there we go side by side is Sainz gonna take Spain's first victory in this tournament to try and do something to come back at Team England no Hamilton actually very stern on the defense takes him wide a little bit on the inside he'll go again on lap four and they've been fighting so much there in the last corner and this uh, next lap that we've closed up now to these two so we're in the fight for potentially even a race win we haven't got a race win yet yet driving as Lando Norris. Could we do that in the final race of this F1 22 World Cup? Hamilton this time doesn't have to go defensive, but that actually might open up the door for Sainz to make a move on the inside of turn one. And will that maybe be the nail in the coffin? Because Hamilton is going to be vulnerable here uh, to the inside. Sainz goes for it. Hamilton squeezes him and there's going to be contact at turn one. Hamilton trying to be as robust as he can with the defense. Sainz Sainz pulling alongside, but it's not going to be enough. We don't have anywhere to go. It's like a traffic jam now with the two side by side into sector one. So we just stick behind right underneath the rear wing of Carlos Sainz and hope that the slipstream is going to pull us in. But also that's going to pull Sainz in and it will into the final sector as we swing through these fast right and lefts. We've only got one sector to go in the first ever 
We've only got one sector to go in the F122 World Cup. Will it be Spain or will it be England? Behind Verstappen's managed to get for sure. But back to the action at the front end. Sainz is going for a move for the lead of the race. Hamilton takes him wide and goes too wide and gives us the place into P1. It's like taking candy from a baby. And in the final round of this World Cup, we'll take a victory driving as Lando Norris for Team England. And that is surely going to secure England the Formula 1 22 World Cup. Drink it in because we're certainly probably not going to have the same success in the Football World Cup. Let's just be real. So let, 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 let England, let the English fans watching the video soak it in because we're going to have depression after probably round 16 at best in the Qatar Football World Cup. So we'll drink it in. England win the Formula One World Cup. 147 points to Spain's 116. Verstappen and Vashore at the end, to be fair, get secure the third place. But Verstappen got the, the, the majority of those points, of course. So that's unbelievable for him, for his country. France do finish ahead of Germany, 50 to 44 points. Australia and Denmark finish level on points after Magnussen and Lungard's efforts today. Canada with 16 points in 8th place, Japan 9th with 7, and Brazil, unfortunately, the only country in this tournament to not score a single point. But of course, both their drivers are F2 drivers in the F1 game currently. So, you know, I have said before, the game does very much nerf the F2 drivers a lot. So it's hard to really tell truly if uh, what would it be like an equal machinery. But of course, this whole time, it is just a game. Take everything with a pinch of salt. But that's been the 2022 Formula 1 World Cup. Guys, if you did enjoy the video and the whole concept of this, then be sure to hit that like button. You know, a lot of work went in to make all the individual liveries, you know, swap the drivers around and kind of just think up of the whole idea. So if you guys did enjoy it, then be sure to support it by hitting the like button. Let me know what you thought as well in the comments below. Did you like the idea? Did you like, did you like the liveries? Because I, I really think some of them came out really, really lovely. And if you aren't around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.